Hello, everybody. My name is Aurora Pettigrew Liu. So you've learned so many machine learning algorithms. Which one to pick? In this tutorial, I'm going to share you my approach to pick machine learning algorithms. We're going to discuss the pros and cons of some commonly used machine learning models. And we're going to see a demo in SAS via Model Studio, where we can assess and compare models in an easy fashion. Before I start picking my models, I usually ask a lot of questions. My questions usually focus on three main components, data, go, and metrics. I ask questions about how are the data collected? If the data contains well-defined features or the data come in set of signals like time series sensors or image pixels. I think about if I assume any relationship or distribution already exists in the data that I should take advantage of. After I know more about the data, I think about the goal of this project. Am I doing prediction? Or am I just simply describe or explore the data? And before I pick models, the last thing I consider is metrics. Am I focusing on the accuracy of this model? Or I care more about the speed of this model when I apply it on new data during the scoring process? Or I care more about interpretability or my boss require me to make sure the model is easy to implement and low maintenance. These are all the things you need to consider and think about before you move to the step of picking models. So now I know what are my ingredients, I'm going to match the machine learning method to my ingredients. In here, we don't have time to explain what are the machine learning models, so I assume you already have some basic knowledge on different machine learning algorithms. I also include some links to describe them below this tutorial. I'm going to focus on the pros and cons of three very popular methods, decision tree, neural network, and deep learning. Decision tree in my opinion, is great for messy data because it's essentially a set of rules to partition the data as compared to a math formula. Being not a math formula, it means you, you can be relaxed on some of the statistical assumption and you can be more flexible handling missing value and outliers. For example, you don't need to replace missing value in order to use it in the math formula. Decision tree is also super interpretable. You can show it to other people without data science background, and they can still understand what you are saying. It's also super actionable. Sometimes your data is really messy. You don't achieve an overall high accuracy. But in decision tree, let's say you try to capture potential customers you can find this one branch that captured 20% of all potential customers and all the data in this branch, 90% of them are potential customers. So even though the overall tree is not super accurate, you can just write an SQL to use this one pure branch. So it's very actionable. The cons of decision tree is that it has unstable topology. When your data have a little noise or change a little, the topology of the tree may change. So that's why many data scientists use decision tree as a part of ensemble model, like gradient boosting or forest. I link an excellent tutorial below explaining how to ensemble trees in SAS software. The next commonly used one is neural network. This one has received so much attention nowadays. The pros is that it's an universal approximator. What it means is that given enough neurons, enough time, it can model any nonlinear relationship. 
And what's better is you don't need to specify a formula, say y equals to something x or x cubic and blah, blah, blah. You can just use this neural network to model any relationship without predefined formula. It's also more resistant to the curse of dimensionality. And once this model is learned, it's really fast to apply it to new data because it's just a very long mass model. So it's fast in scoring as well. However, nothing is perfect. The cons of neural network is that it is a black box. You cannot interpret it. So in some domain, for example, you need to explain to your customer why they get rejected credit or not. You can't use neural network because it's a black box. It doesn't offer explainability. Because it's a math formula, you also need to impute missing values. So if your data has a lot of missing values, maybe this is not the right approach. You also need more training data uh, for a longer time, and you often need a strong signal so there's less noise so the neural network can perfectly capture the curvy or any nonlinear relationship. So these are the cons of neural network. And every time we talk about neural network, people ask about deep learning. Deep learning is also a very popular set of machine learning algorithm, but it's not just neural network. It is not better. It is not this more layers neural network, and it's not suitable for any data. It's more complex network structures designed for specific tasks and data. For example, time series data or image data. In deep learning methods, the pros is that is usually have really, 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 really great performance for those specific data and tasks. For example, image data. Your inputs are pixels. And you can't possibly do any feature engineering because they are pixels and nobody care about explaining them. You need structure to combine pixels into eyes, combine eyes into faces, combine faces into a person or a group of people, and combine groups of people to a scenario. You need those layers and layers of feature creation in order to find the true meaning of the data. And that is a perfect example of using deep learning. The cons of deep learning is that it's also a black box, and it's still a math formula, just really, 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 really big. You can't explain it. It has a lot of parameters to learn, so you really need large data, long training time, and super computation power in order to learn that many parameters. You also need to understand if your data have clear features defined in them, just don't use deep learning. Deep learning is applicable to data where the features are not clearly defined and you need layers of layers of abstraction for feature engineering. All right, so in step one, we learned we need to ask many questions about our project and our task. In step two, we learned the pros and cons of different machine learning algorithms. Now is the time to do the match. You will still find many algorithms suitable for your project. So in this step three, we are assessing results in a systematic approach. I'm going to show you how to do that in a very cool tool called SESVIA Model Studio. So I am now in SESVIA Model Studio. The data I'm playing with is from a telecommunication company. And I try to model this churn binary variables, which represents whether a customer stay leave your company or stay in your company. If they're going to churn, if this equals to one, they're living, then you can offer them a coupon. So in this data, we have 128 variables describing the customer's data usage and also his or her demographics information. 
The features are clearly defined, so I know I don't need deep learning models. In SAS Wire Model Studio, we approach data science project in this proceduralized way called pipeline. In here, we start with data, then we have this procedure to pre-process the data. After that, we can select the set of models of our interest and then build them after we pre-process the data and then compare them in the end. Each model can be customized by choosing these options on the right. So I pre-run this already. So let's see what's the result. We can right click on any node to see the result. It shows me among all these models, the best one is this auto-tune gradient boosting, which is a gradient boosting model is an ensemble of decision trees. In here, it's picked the best algorithm using the KS Yodan, which is similar to AUCROC area under the curve. But you can feel free to specify what is your metrics that you care about the most. In the assessment tab, you can see lift plus and ROC plus of all the models or the selected models. There are also other options. You can also see all the feed statistics of every model in train and validation data. In SAS Model Studio project, you can also compare between pipelines, which means you may have different uh, procedures of pre-processing the data or other things. You can compare them as well, and it will show you the best among the best models. And these, you can see the details of the best models of all pipelines. You can also see this inside tabs, which is like a auto writing report. They show you the summary of this project, what is the best model, and then some statistics, and you can add your own notes so you can summarize your project as a report. Moreover, once you find your best procedure, the systematic way we describe in step three, you can also save it in the shared spot for others to use. You can also deploy it in another tool called SAS Model Manager, that is not the focus of today, but in the SAS Wire Model Manager, you can um, monitor the model's performance over time and retrain the model as you need. I link a really good tutorial on that SAS Model Manager tool below here. To summarize, machine learning algorithms are just tools in the toolbox. To use the tools correctly, we need to understand your ingredients, then match the tool, match the methods to the ingredients. And finally, assess result in a systematic approach, such as using tools like SAS Wire Model Studio. If you want to see more of such tutorials, don't forget to subscribe to SAS User's YouTube channel. And feel free to comment below this tutorial for questions and also check out all the links and resources. Thank you.